Hi, I'm Monica Williams. And I'm Victoria Baltimore, and we are from Curtin University in Omaha, Nebraska. And our folklore topic is carnivalesque. Most people, when they hear the term carnival, immediately picture summer rides, all sorts of games and prizes, food on a stick, and maybe even twinkling lights. While this is an appropriate image for what we see carnivals as today, the term means something far different in an Irish folklore context. In this video, we will be exploring the term carnivalesque as it was celebrated and explored in medieval and antiquated times. As literary theorist Mikhail Botkin put it, the term carnival signified symbolic destruction of authority in official culture and the assertion of popular renewal. Carnival is a special, creative life form with its own space and time. The term carnivalesque has several aspects to it in order to fully grasp the term as it was used in folklore contexts. But more simply put, carnivals were a celebration of laughter, equality, and decade-long traditions. The normal society in which carnival emerged was one of clear social distinction and a very sure way of going about your daily life. Typical traditions and festivals exemplified the divided social classes. People were expected to wear clothing that showcased their traditional status, and it was very obvious who belonged where. In carnival festivities, however, traditional hierarchical status was forgotten about, and divisions among the communities were mended. Perhaps one of the greatest aspects about the carnival was that it celebrated equality. A true sense of utopia emerged, and through this, a special type of communication between people of all ages and classes. Typically, there would have been an expected norm of proper etiquette when interacting with members of a higher social class. During carnival, there is no need for these social norms and no need for distance between classes. As Botkin says, Free and familiar contacts were deeply felt and formed an essential element of the carnival spirit. Botkin sums up the essence of carnival here when he writes, Carnival is not a spectacle seen by the people. They live in it, and everyone participates because its very idea embraces all the people. While carnival lasts, there is no other life outside it. During carnival time, life is subject only to its laws. That is, the laws of its own freedom. It has a universal spirit, it is a special condition of the entire world, of the world's revival and renewal, in which all take part. During Carnival, everything is playful and fun in a celebratory manner. Laughter was used to break away from the seriousness of the world. Laughter is described by Botkin in three ways. One is, is it's festive, it is the laughter of all the people. As well, laughter is universal, it is directed at everyone in the Carnival. Lastly, carnival laughter is ambivalent. While it is jolly and carefree, it is also deriding and used in a mocking sense. Laughter was also seen in comic literature during the medieval ages, which was infused into the carnival spirit. The carnivalesque nature did not only apply to festivals. It was also seen in funeral traditions in Irish folklore. It was tradition to have family and friends over to the deceased one's house for food, drinks, dancing, laughter, game playing, and storytelling, all in the presence of the corpse. This brought a carnivalesque nature to the typical Irish wake. All the festivities were in the presence of the corpse because they wanted the deceased to know of his popularity, even though he or she had now passed on from the living world. The rosary was typically said at midnight, followed by storytelling and games. Some of the pastimes consisted of hiding and seek games, including under the corpse, competitions of strength, and kissing games. It was not uncommon for the corpse to be dealt cards, have a pipe in his mouth, or dance with the company. These actions show that the wakes were not seen as a somber event. Therefore, they would call this period from the passing away until the burial, the merry wake. This tradition was simply used for those who died at an old age, not in a tragic situation. The Irish Wake Amusements author, Sean O'Sullivanhain, described these merry wakes as far merrier than weddings. As well, these nights consisted of turf throwing and frivolity. Therefore, it was common for younger people to look forward to the death of an elderly person so that they could have a fun night. Carnival and the carnivalesque nature is not something that simply exists in terms of ancient Irish folklore, as tradition is still alive and well and can be seen in several events existing today. Mardi Gras, for example, is a symbolic end to the carnival season. This festival is marked by vibrant costumes, elaborate balls, parades, music, dance, and food. Another holiday tradition that can be marked by its carnival nature in today's society is Halloween. Halloween is recognized through music, parades, costumes, and kid-friendly activities such as trick-or-treating. Both are considered community events because both bring people together. 
Parallels can be drawn between this type of carnival and the carnivals we have learned about in folklore through the joyous aspects celebrating unity and laughter. In each of the carnival holidays we observe today, people come together to celebrate various traditions through costumes, food, and fun. In both traditions, social status seemingly melts away as well. Carnivalesque was a term used to describe events filled with laughter, joy, merriment, and fun. It took many different forms and carries on into many traditions today. We made this documentary by first researching and gathering pictures, and then we created the documentary in iMovie and added the pictures and the recording. Um, I would say that we both kind of contributed equally because, like, we both worked together to write the script, and then as one of us was working on editing it, the other would go look for pictures and insert them into iMovie, and we just kind of worked together for them. Um, Let's see. I would say that I learned about how much overlap there is between festivals and carnival and folklore context and then there like what there is today. I didn't realize that the term carnival could be used to describe like Mardi Gras and Halloween. Um, and I learned like all the laughter and the unity and all of that that goes along with both carnivals back then and then also today. Um, I did, personally did not know anything about carnival last or what the word before taking this class. So I found it interesting uh, learning more about it and going in detail about what like everything carnivalesque entails. Um, also, I thought it, it was incredibly interesting how the Merry Wake has so much carnivalesque aspects to it because back at home, that is completely different. It's usually a somber event. So it was really interesting.